Philip Roger Bennett has no patience for those who let their grass grow too long. In fact, after getting into an argument with neighbor Marty Corbett about his lawn, Bennett not only slapped Corbett in the face, but burned down his house when he didn't immediately start mowing. After the argument, Corbett went inside to watch TV with his daughter Kylie when Bennett kicked down his door and told him he had five seconds to go outside. Alarmed, Corbett called 911, and while he was on the phone, his neighbor returned with two gas cans in hand, which he poured all over the home before lighting it. Many people dislike their neighbors, but it takes a special kind of psycho to take things as far as Oregon's Jeffrey Wright Leonard did. Leonard was angered over a long-standing dispute stemming from a parking issue. After throwing dog feces and shining floodlights into the homes of his neighbors didn't get them to move, he then tried to run them off the road. When that didn't work, he opted to kill them by hiring an assassin to ram their vehicle off the highway. Fortunately. David Constantine was such a bad neighbor that he was legally banned from returning to his home. He threatened them, cut down their hedges, built a barbed wire fence between the two homes and would bang on their walls at all hours of the night. He falsely accused his neighbors of hitting him with a frying pan and stabbing him in the chest, which resulted in an innocent man's arrest. Constantine's harassment was so bad that it eventually resulted in his being arrested for the attempted murder of Stefan and Lucy Ward. You wouldn't normally call someone a bad neighbor for treating you to an expensive pro football game. Imagine, however, looking over your credit card statement at the end of the month only to discover that you were the one who paid for the experience since your neighbor had stolen your credit card. That's what happened to Bill and Melissa Callahan, who thought it was awfully generous of Anthony James David to take them to a Tampa Bay Buccaneers game. Most lottery winners want to change their lifestyle for the better, but some people use the cash to bring their lifestyle into upscale neighborhoods. One such person, Michael Carroll, spent a portion of his $15 million winnings on a beautiful five-bedroom home in a swanky neighborhood of Norfolk. He then proceeded to turn the property into a 24-hour racetrack for beat-up old cars. As if the dust and noise weren't bad enough. He also insisted on lighting up fireworks and distress flares in the middle of the night. <laughs> 